hey what's up guys welcome to a brand new tutorial on our channel today i'll be going over a full beginner's guide on how to script on roblox so make sure to stay until the end because i promise you you will double your scripting skills if you actually watch the whole video so first of all we'll be going over some functions spawn functions what remote events are what four i loops are and we'll be going over twin service and how you guys can use twin service to make your parts uh enlarge smoother or move smoother because that will be something we will do okay so uh, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and join the discord down below because in a few days i'm dropping the biggest biggest project i've done yet it's gonna be the biggest pack and make sure to join the discord so you can join the giveaway i'll be doing another giveaway soon and i'll be recording more tutorial videos from now on so make sure to stay tuned so hit that subscribe button turn notifications on and let's get right into it okay so first of all i'm gonna show you what's the difference between a local script and a server script and how you can fire off a server script using a remote event so let's start off by going into starter player and we're gonna go ahead and go into starter character scripts and we're going to create a local script okay so let's create a part first i already created one so if you guys want to create a part you go ahead and go into model part and we're going to name it test part okay so what is the difference between a local script and a server script so if we do anything if we run any function in this local script uh, the thing is other players in the game won't be able to see what we're doing and that's a big problem because if you guys want other people to see that you change the parts color for example or anything else then you will have to fire it off a remote event so if we go ahead and do like let's say let's put way here and we do uh, game dot workspace dot test part dot brick color equals to brick color dot new let's do this okay so we're referencing here uh the test part right here in workspace and we're going to change the color okay so let's go ahead and go into the base plate and let's test it out so once we load in after two seconds the part should turn red okay it turned into a i don't know it, it turned into like a pinkish color it doesn't matter uh, but if we go ahead and actually look at it through the server the part still looks the same and that's a big problem because if you guys want to add something where other players can see that you're actually changing it we need to run it through a server script and i'm going to show you how to do that just now okay so instead of doing this uh we're going to fire off a remote event so we're going to create a remote event inside the replicated storage and we're going to name this remote event color event okay so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, go ahead and put right here. So game dot replicated storage dot color event fire server. OK, so right now it's going to fire the server. And once uh, once we fired it, OK, we're going to go into server script service and we're going to create a brand new script. OK, so game dot replicated storage dot color event. So referencing the color event again uh, dot on server event connect function player. Okay, so right now uh, it will fire off a function and will be visible to all players. So let's do uh, game dot workspace dot test part dot brick color equals to brick color dot new. Let's put another color now. Let's put medium red. Let, let's make it red, actually red now. And once we do that, right now if we head in and test the game out. In two seconds, yeah, it should turn medium red. And now if we go ahead and look at the server side, it's it's uh, again a medium red or whatever the brick color says. So now other players can see that you actually changed the part of the color. And that's very important if you want to make your game uh, server sided. But there's a more efficient way to do this. And I'm going to show you how. So we're going to be using functions and spawn functions. Uh, first of all, we're going to be referencing functions. So, okay, yeah, this is easy to make. Uh, and it works, but there's a much more efficient way to do it and I'm going to show you right now Okay, so we're going to make a brand new function and what we're going to do is we're going to do local function and We're going to name it a uh, part color Okay, I'm going to click enter and I will open a prompt like this and we're going to put here part and uh, New color, okay so uh, To start off what we're going to do here is we're going to do part dot brick color equals to new color okay so what we will do now is we will reference so we will call this function so we're going to do part color 
okay we have two parts here i put two variables and i'm going to explain what each does okay so we're referencing part which is going to be the first variable which is going to be the test part right here so we're going to do game dot workspace dot test part now this right here is this so you can put anything right here so if you're, for example name it something else it will still count as a part and it will be in the function so if we do game that works with the test part and we do right here so we do another variable brick color dot new let's put cyan okay so right now uh if we call it again it should do the same effect but it will be much more cleaner and also uh we will we can replace it with any other part because we're calling a function we're not just calling one part and you can use this function to any part so for example we can do uh part color so let's let's put right here wait one so we're gonna wait a second and then we're gonna put it to uh, let's say medium green and right now if we go ahead and test what should happen is it should now again after two seconds yeah blue and then it turns into green so it's a much more efficient way to uh, go ahead and use functions than just rather simply scripting everything so, and i'm going to show you right now what spawn functions are and how to use spawn functions so let's say for example right here we wanted to add a spawn function and i'm going to show you what a spawn function does and why it bypasses it Okay, so uh, I'm gonna copy this over and I'm gonna put spawn function and I'm gonna end it like this. So it's written spawn and function, okay? So the spawn function, if I put wait one right here, uh, so let's say for example, I do uh, wait two, okay? And I put here medium green and I say, let's put another thing right here, so let's do Let's do some pastel blue, I guess. Uh, okay, so uh, what spawn functions do is basically if I were to put a weight to here. So let's say, for example, I put this on weight 2.5. Okay, so what it should do is it doesn't actually wait. It doesn't read this line of code it just basically runs a function on its own so for example if we go ahead and wait two seconds it will turn the uh, block into a cyan color and after that it will wait 2.5 seconds uh, but it will ignore this so it will wait two seconds turn it into pastel blue then after 2.5 seconds it will turn it into medium green so it will change colors three times uh but it, it it won't like it won't wait for this function to complete and then do this it will automatically do this so I'm gonna show you right now how it looks in game. So boom, if you go ahead and put it like this, so see, one, two, three. There you go, see that? It changed three times because the spawn function ignores the, uh, ignores this one. So it ignores this and basically after 2.5 seconds. So uh, let's see, two seconds passes, it turns into a cyan color. Then two seconds passes, it turns into pastel blue and then uh, when this was changed it will wait 2.5 seconds and it will do this so it will change it to medium green and that's what the last color of it is so uh, that would be for the remote events i showed you guys how to go ahead and put this into your game so other people can see that it's actually changing color you can do this so let's for example go ahead and want to change transparency so we're going to put right here so let's say transparency and we're going to put transparency right here so we're going to put transparency equals to one we're gonna go ahead and put it again here and we're gonna put it let's let's do let's put it on 0 0.5 at the end so right now it's gonna go to one then it's gonna go to zero uh let's put it like, like this okay so it's gonna go to zero okay so now it will uh take the property transparency you can literally pick any property you want from here so we can do transparency reflectance size anything anything so we go ahead and get into it. And right now what should happen is after two seconds, it should go completely invisible. Let's see what we did there. Unable to sign property brick color. Oh yeah, because we put brick color here, right? My bad. Okay, so we have to change this to transparency. Okay, and right now it should work. Okay, so right now if we go ahead and look into it. Okay, there we go. It should, yep. And it's gonna end up on 0 0.5 yeah see that so now it's like half half of it is there and half of it is not okay 
So the last thing I will be covering in my part uh, before SXS scripting takes over is uh, four eye loops. So we're gonna be doing four eye loops here. So I'm gonna show you what it actually means and how you can use it. So we're gonna type in four i equals to one, two, uh, 10. Let's do 10 for now and I'm gonna explain to you what this is. Okay, so i is the number of repeat counts there is. Okay, so for example, uh, if I uh, want to repeat a function if I want to do something 10 times uh, it will uh, do it on this number so i equals to 1 to 10 so if I go i equals to 1 to 2 it will only repeat, repeat the thing two times okay so let's do for example print let, let me delete all of this so I can uh, show this to you so print uh, this message is printed okay so what we're gonna do now is if we click run and this remote event fires right here i'm going to show you it will print two times so see this message is printed and it will say x2 okay so now if you want to add like for example let's say 10 and we put in a weight here so weight 0 0.5 this will be the wait time before every function of this is fired before every print is fired so for example uh, it will gonna it's gonna be it's gonna say print then it's gonna wait 0 0.5 seconds then it's gonna print again and that up to 10 times so let's test it out and see how it looks like okay so once we're in the game so we're gonna see it's gonna wait this message printed 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 it's gonna do that upwards to 10 and then it's gonna stop Okay, so those are four i functions and they're pretty useful uh let's try and mess with it around again and let's see what we can do so maybe we can uh let's do like this so we can go ahead and put five we're gonna go ahead and put game dot workspace you can use functions again but i'm gonna be using this to be a little more faster in the tutorial uh dot test bar equals two dot let's do a size equals two Again, we're going to copy this and paste it over plus vector tree because size on Roblox is used from vector tree. We're going to create a vector tree that new. Uh, let's do three, three, three. Let's do 10. OK, so it will repeat for 10 times. It will wait 0 0.5 seconds in between and the size of the part will be in plus uh, by three studs each. So X, Y, Z uh, on all directions. So right now, after two seconds, it should increase in size 10 times. So let's see. Okay, bam, 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 bam. Yep, it's increasing in size. And then after 10, it stops. So basically you can make this even faster. So if you wanna, for example, do, let's say we put a weight of one here and we repeat this 20 times, but we make it one. It's gonna look a lot smoother now. Now there is another thing that you guys can use, which is tweens, which is way, way more smoother. Uh, but right now I'm just showing you what four eye loops are. So let's look at that. Bam. And again, because we fired it off a remote, we see in the server. So if any other player were to join, they would actually see this uh, queue being enlarged and everything. So yeah. Okay guys, so now we're moving on to tweens and how to tween parts. And I'm gonna show you why this is much better than the normal way. Uh, so let's say we want to increase the size of a part inside the game and we want to do it smoothly. So let's go uh, first and make a part. Let's go to home and let's insert a part. It's going to be right here. Okay. And I'm going to show you now the difference between a non-tween and a tween. So uh, first of all, we're going to make a script right here. Uh, and this is what I made. So local part equals to workspace. And we're waiting for this part right here that we made. And then so the part size will... Uh, go ahead and enlarge every so second then it's gonna wait two seconds then it's gonna be three okay so what if you guys want to make that smoother Le so let's see how it is now so we're gonna make this now okay so boom boom and boom see it's not smooth at all so yeah there we go it, it, it's just going randomly in bursts and it's not even smooth at all and i'm gonna show you now what a tween does okay so we're gonna disable this and we're gonna enable the tween I'm gonna show you how you guys can customize it. Okay, so I'm gonna put here, wait for child. So we're gonna wait for the part. So local tween service equals the game, get service tween service. So we're basically referencing the tween service. Uh, that's something that's not here in the Explorer. Uh, it's a uh, Roblox game service that we're referencing through this line. Then we're referencing the part. So workspace, uh, wait for child part. And then I'm gonna explain to you what a tween info is. So a tween info, this will be the time of the tween. So how long will it take for the tween to be done? okay 
so it's two seconds now so we can put it to one we can put it at three it depends like how long you wait the more smoother the twin will be so the more time it will take so enum easing style linear the, there are a lot of easing styles uh you can go ahead and check it out on the dev form so there's like elastic there's bounce there's sign there, i'm gonna explain on the dev form there's a much more in-depth explanation to what easing styles are but basically if i go ahead and put in bounce so when the tween uh, reaches three seconds it will like bounce up i'm gonna show you it's a really cool effect but for now we're gonna put uh elastic or actually we're gonna put sign because that's like the most normal one and uh, easing direction out uh, we're putting out because it's parts and here's the fun part where you can get where you guys can customize literally anything so repeat count is how many times will this repeat so for example uh we put this to two so we put this to uh two it will repeat two times okay and next up is delay time so how long will the twin build delayed so let's put it on five seconds so after five seconds it will play uh so we enabled it and let's test it out i'm gonna show you every property here in a second but let's just go ahead and test the game out so after five seconds this should go up in size so let's wait for it boom see that see how smooth that is and then there it is okay so let's go ahead now okay so it looks like we left something out let me just see uh yeah it's on repeat count too let's put that to zero okay so what we can do now is maybe we can make it uh okay two and then we can put size 50 let's do again 50 50 50 uh and let's put the late time to three seconds uh and let's test this one out okay so right now if we go again into this and let's test it out again so after three seconds boom and see now it's bigger and it's gonna say here twin is done okay see how smooth that was and now what we can do again uh is we can go ahead and go put here true so if we go ahead and do that now the twin should go back to its original size okay so let's go ahead and wait for the twin to go up so boom and watch this so bam twin is done now it's back to normal and now the part is as normal as it was so this is really really useful and you can basically do anything here it's not just size i'm going to show you in a second so if we go ahead and put tween time to two for example and we put bounce uh and then we do let's test it out again okay so what's this okay so now it bounces like this and then it goes back see that you can play around with these easing styles it's basically literally you can put whatever you want so let's say we put a repeat count here to two and we go ahead and press play so let's test it out again so boom back and see it's not printing yet because the tween is not complete boom again goes back and then it should do one more time is delaying like this because we put the delay time to three seconds if i were to go ahead and for example uh uh if i were to go ahead and for example do repeat count one but make the delay time a zero okay let's put it two again uh if i were to do that then what should happen is it should go instantly right after the screen is on c boom then it goes again and then it goes again and then boom again because it's repeat count two so one two three and the tween is done we can maybe play with this again so we can put elastic we can put time to like five seconds we can put the reverse to false this to zero and maybe make the delay time four seconds and we can put this to like let's say a hundred 100 100 
And let's play it again. So let's just move because it's gonna get pretty large. So boom. And then see, twin is done. Now it's like elastic, so it's not bouncing. Or maybe you could put something like, let's say for example, exponential. Uh, by the way, the the reason that why it's going up like that is because of this. If we move this, for example, it should be good. So let's see. So now it's exponential. See, now it's growing slowly, slowly up and then it stops. You can basically, as, as I said again, play around with these easing styles. So we're gonna put, let's put sign here and I'm gonna show you another thing. So we can do literally, so all of the things, so if we go right here into properties, almost all of them you can tween. So you can tween the size, the C frame, uh, the position, you can tween the, uh, I think, yeah, transparency, reflectance. So let's try another one. Let's put transparency equals to one, okay? So now, if we go ahead and test it out, watch this now, okay? So it has a delay of four seconds, and watch this. Boom. It disappears, basically. And we'll say tween is done. Or, or you can just go ahead and do a reverse. So we do true. Then we go in again. So we'll do boom, like ghost, disappear, and then it will pop up again. See that? And then I'll say tween is done. Okay. So there is another thing we can do is to tween the position. So what we can do is we can do position equals to part dot position plus c uh, plus vector three dot new zero zero and let's see three for example or right, maybe that's too much uh, two I'm gonna do false here and let's test this out So right now, because we're tweeting the position, so let's see after four seconds. Yeah, look at that. It's now moving. Like, it's, it moves, and then it stops. So what we can do again is maybe we, if you want to, like, move apart, we can do, like, let's say, for example, 10. And then we can do reverse to true. So watch what happens now. Watch this. So it will go ahead and start to tween. After four seconds, bam, it's moving, and once we put it to reverse, it's sliding back. See? And maybe what we can do is maybe we can just put this, you know, you can put this to like 100, and then we put this to bounce, and watch this now. So let's try this one. You can basically do any, almost any property, and it's much better than just waiting and doing weights inside the script. So let's test it out again boom see look at that it slides bounces and then it's gonna head back look at this boom and now it's right here so this was a beginner's tutorial i wasn't going anything advanced i wasn't trying to aim to make this too advanced but it's just a beginner tutorial to show you guys that there are much easier functions you can use instead of just you know putting weights or uh, making the size in four eye loops or anything you can literally do all of this stuff and i promise you your scripting skills will advance two times you watch the whole video until the end uh, so yeah that's basically it uh you guys can sub and turn on notifications because the next video i'm dropping my biggest project yet it is going to be a giant giant project so make sure to join the discord down below i will reveal there what it is uh, and again, make sure to subscribe, turn notifications on. I will be doing more tutorials from now on and make sure to join the giveaway in the discord and that will be it. So see you guys in the next video.